Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. I have some headlines I'd like to share with you. And first we start with China turning on their nuclear powered artificial sun. And this headline comes of fizz.org, short for physics. China successfully powered up its artificial sun nuclear fusion reactor for the first time their state media reported on Friday, making a great advancement in the country's nuclear power research capabilities. They call it the HL2M Tomahawk Reactor. This is China's largest and most advanced nuclear fusion experimental research device, and scientists hope that the device can potentially unlock a powerful clean energy source. Now that's from the article. So you see the language here that China's uh, state-run media wants us to believe that their nuclear-powered artificial sun is going to be only for clean energy. So there's a little bit of background here why they're calling it the uh, artificial sun. So it uses a powerful magnetic field to fuse hot plasma and can reach temperatures over 150 million degrees Celsius. Now that's according to People's Daily, which is uh, making that temperature approximately 10 times hotter than the core of the sun. So this is all happening in southwestern Sichuan province. And uh, the project was completed late last year. Now it's taken time for them to get this fully on board. Um, and that should be no surprise with something this uh, major. They've been working on this since 2006. Uh, they are called, you know, uh, science tells us that fusion is considered the holy grail of energy and is what powers our sun. Now, this, uh, the article will go on to say that this is extremely difficult and expensive. It comes with a price tag of $22.5 billion uh, to make this project work. Um, that is a huge price tag. Look at that staggering number of $22.5 billion um, that China uh, easily spent on uh, this nuclear-powered artificial sun. But here in America, we struggle to get our own people who are out of work $1,200 while they are having no issue uh, spending spending cash as if uh, it, it means nothing, as if the value means nothing. Here is really my whole take on this article. While America's economy is sluggish and slowed down because of COVID-19, China continues to make advances in technology, space, and energy. We have come to a tipping point that must be addressed. The wheels of the American dream are coming to a halt, and China continues to benefit from America's mistakes. Like many of you, this frustrates me, this angers me. This is our problem we inherited from poor decisions of the past. Forget coming together to pat Biden on the back and understand the reality that communist China, who's a friend of Biden, a good friend, will stop at nothing to own American intellectual and real estate in America property and properties. The gains of China are not the downfall of America. However, the stalling of American advancement in technology is the gain of China. I hope I make myself clear. Our next headline, also from physics.org or phys.org, uh, this is really heating up in China. And that's why the theme of today's show is really China oriented. 
Chinese photonic quantum computer demonstrates quantum supremacy. Uh, this is really, really deep. A team of researchers affiliated with several institutions in China has built and tested a photonic quantum computer that demonstrates quantum supremacy. In their paper published in the journal Science, the group describes their computer, which they call the Jizhuang, and how well it performed while conducting Gaussian boson sampling. Okay, so I threw a lot at you right there. So let's break this down. Quantum computers have been in the news for many different reasons, but it's, they're starting. you're starting to hear more and more about quantum computing. Quantum computers have an expectation that they can vastly outperform the conventional uh, computers that we use on specific tasks. This is known as quantum supremacy. Until now, only one computer has ever achieved this feat. It's Google's Sycamore device. Okay. So actually, Google had, up to this point, was the only technology company that had a computer that could fit this narrative of quantum supremacy. Okay. And this is still a very new field. Uh, there's many different designs that are vastly different. Now, let's talk about Google Sycamore for one second. This was based on qubits represented by superconducting materials. Now, in this new effort, China develops the photon-based quantum computer capable of carrying out a single specific type of calculation boson sampling okay boson sampling is a means for circulating the output of a straight line optical circuit that has multiple inputs and outputs so we've covered what boson sampling is covered google's sycamore device now let's talk about the jizu wang the Jizu Wang in this article says that it took approximately 200 seconds to provide an answer. Now, they noted that it would have taken the world's fastest supercomputer approximately 2.5 billion years to carry out the same calculations. So they're labeling this a clear example of quantum supremacy. Conventional computers become bogged down very quickly when trying to calculate distributions of such a system. The Jizu Wang was built to handle 100 inputs and 100 outputs using 300 beam splitters and 75 mirrors. So as you can see, this is a souped up monster computer that has massive implications for the future of technology. So I have a few thoughts on this article. It, it right here, this article further proves my point and my initial skepticism of how not only is China advancing technology faster than the United States, but beating the most recognized technology company outside of Microsoft, which is Google. China making these types of advances should send shockwaves to Silicon Valley. As China bolsters better technology than Silicon Valley, it only makes them at Silicon Valley less relevant and America more reliant on technology from outside of our country. Now, thank you for tuning in to today's show. I would love to read your comments and hear what you think about today's broadcast. Make sure to like and subscribe and also check out Preston Super Show wherever you listen to podcasts. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor and a privilege to do the show for you.